and one of the most beautiful stories of uh, the love of a father that we'll find anywhere. Of course, if it's in نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ القصص, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the story of Yusuf alayhi salam that we will narrate to you the best of stories. And so because time is short, I just wanted to touch on a few points from this. And the benefit, I hope that I'll take it first and foremost, and that we'll all take it and apply it in whatever capacity we can. We are all trying as parents, as mothers, as fathers, as siblings, uh, as community servants. Every one of us has a lot of things that we're working on and trying to improve. So one of those is as in the role of a father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Surah Yusuf. An amazing thing to notice is that the very introduction of the surah, Allah starts with a conversation between Yusuf alayhi salam and his father Yaqub alayhi salam. Right? right when Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ The first part of the story that Allah starts with is this conversation between Yusuf alayhi salam and his father. And the Mufassirin, they mentioned Yusuf alayhi salam was a seven-year-old boy at this time. He was seven years old. He sees this dream. It's bothering him. It's on his mind. He doesn't know what, what to make of it, what to do with it. And his solution to it is to go speak to his father. And so the first thing I wanted us to take is that his father was approachable. Yusuf alayhi salam went first to his father. And we should ask ourselves, especially the fathers, if that's the case with our own children. Do our children come discuss things with us? Do they tell us something that's on their mind bothering them? What's going on at school? What's happening uh, you know, in their personal lives with their friends? Do we even have time for our children? Especially in the society that we live in. And this is something that more so than other places, we probably have to make a more concerted effort because most of us, especially in the Bay Area, we're working nine to fives, right? Probably six days a week for some people. And you're tired of paying the bills, you know, fulfilling our responsibilities. And we come home in this state of exhaustion, you know, just tired, finished. A lot of times we just want to sit on our phone. We just want to sit and do nothing. And time passes, days pass, months pass, years pass. And sometimes we neglect to build that connection with our children. We don't have time for them, right? A lot of times when they're young, they come, they're annoying us with questions. They're saying this and we, have, we think we have other things that are more important at that time. Believe me, in those moments now, when our children are coming to us, even with silly little things, right? Their little problems with their games and issues that they're having with something, that attention we give to them is more important than anything else we could be doing at that time. So the very beginning of the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with this conversation. Ya abati inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaba. Washamsa wal qamara ra'aytuhum li sajideen. And then you look all the way to the end of the story. Right? All the way 40 years later. Right? This is the only story in the Quran that Allah narrates beginning to end chronological order. The whole story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And everything that happened in between, we hear so much of the story, right? Yusuf alayhi salam was thrown in the well by his brothers and he was taken away. He was sold. You know, he was raised in the house of the Aziz. He got an education. Eventually he was thrown in jail. He was falsely accused, came out of that, eventually became pretty much the leader of all of Misr, right? 40 years, the Mufassirin mentioned, 40 years from the time that he was thrown in the well till the time that at the end of the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ وَقَالَ دْخُلُوا مِصْرَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ وَرَفَعَ أَبَوَيْهِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ وَخَرُّوا لَهُ سُجَّدًا وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِي هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Forty years later, Yusuf alayhi salam is reunited with his father and he remembers that conversation that he had had with his father when he was seven years old 40 years later, and it's the first thing that he converses with his father about. So that level of trust, of familiarity with our children, of conversing with them, of them bringing their problems to us and feeling like they can. A lot of times we, we may have good intentions, we may reprimand them, but we don't realize the manner that we're reprimanding them 
or that we're being harsh with them, a lot of times turns them away from coming to us again. And you look amazingly, the, Yaqub alayhi salam knew that the other brothers had done something wrong. Right? When they came and they made the excuse of the, the wolf ate Yusuf alayhi salam, says, Bal sawwalat lakum anfusukum amran fasabrun jameel. Right? He said, you guys did something. He knew from the very get-go. He said the same thing when they, when they weren't at fault, but Yusuf alayhi salam had detained bin Yamin. Bal sawwalat lakum anfusukum amra fasabrun jameel. He knew they'd done something wrong, yet for 40 years, he continued to be accessible to them. You see the advice is Allah even speaks about how he advised the other 10 brothers, right? the 11 brothers besides bin Yamin. So 10 of them who were part of this plot to get rid of Yusuf alayhi salam, he continued to be, you know, they were wrong. They did something extremely bad, worse than any of our children could imagine to do. They tried to kill Yusuf alayhi salam. Or they left him for dead. We can't imagine our children doing something at that level. Yet, despite the fact that he knew that they'd done something terrible, he continued to advise them. He continued to give them. They're, they're traveling back in three times, right? They came to the court of Yusuf alayhi salam. Oh, you fast forward all the way towards the end of the story. And they come back. The second time they're going, he advises them. He says, the advice, and this brings me to the second point I wanted to touch on. He remained accessible and he continued despite the fact that they had hurt him personally so much. His grief was, you know, beyond what we could imagine. Parents, we know when we lose sight of our children for even a few moments, what goes on in our hearts, right? Like you're in the mall or you're at the store and your little child runs down the aisle without you realizing, right? You turn around and they're not where you left them. Like your heart just sometimes jumps out of your mouth. You don't know, like, where are they? Until you find them, nothing else matters in that moment. Imagine the separation and not knowing for 40 years. And of course, it was a test of Allah. In fact, the Mufassirin, they mentioned, Yusuf alayhi salam was commanded by Allah. Even later, after he got a little older and Nubuwat came, he was commanded by Allah that you do not send any communication to Sham. Don't send any messages. Because he had the capacity at that point. That's a question people raise. Like, why? At, at a certain point, it's understood. He was seven. He was a, sold off as a slave. He was being raised. But then, eventually, he became the king's right-hand man. He could have, at that point, reached out to his family. The test of Allah was, no, even at this point, it's not the time. So imagine Yaqub alayhi salam's test, 40 years, the grief, the, the, the pain, the separation. And at the, despite all of that, and that the, his sons were the ones who caused that harm, he's still giving them advice to protect them. Don't enter into Misr from one, one door. Go from all these different doors so that you don't cause a scene. The evil eye doesn't affect you. People's attention isn't drawn to you. And as he gives advice, and we find this throughout the surah, wherever he's giving advice to Yusuf alayhi salam and to the other brothers, he always then makes the nisba, the connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when he complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he complains to Allah. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ when the people said, what, you know, what are you, why, it's 40 years, let it go, Yusuf's gone. And at that point, the grief, uh, He is holding back his sobs. When they, this is at the point when they came to tell him that Bin Yamin had been detained 40 years later. And it's not, Yusuf alayhi salam is not even on their mind at this point. And he turns around from them and he complains and he cries. And the grief was so much, the scholars mentioned that six years before this, Yaqub alayhi salam had gone blind from crying. So 30 plus years, he's crying, crying, crying so much that he goes blind. When they tell him that Binyamin's left behind, he hasn't come, he says, you guys have done something again. He cries, he complains to Allah. I put my complaint towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else. And the people mocked him. Right? You're going 
you're gonna, how long are you going to cry over Yusuf? It's gone four, four decades later. But that connection was such, despite it, despite all that pain, the advice that he's giving these sons of his to protect them for their best outcome. And this was the second point I wanted to touch on, that a lot of times we fail to recognize this line. Of course, there's discipline of our children. That's one thing. But it should, at the same time, never become something that is personal. What I mean by that is, it shouldn't be that we're so angry with our children that now it's not about discipline. and Now it's just taking revenge. Now it's that they did something they shouldn't have done. They were wrong. And I've seen this countless times as parents, and a lot of times as parents in law as well. We, because we think we're right, and we may be right, we come down so harshly that despite us being right, the outcome that we bring around is, is wrong. We cause harm to the relationship, to the children, to, to our own children a lot of times. And because of that, then sometimes we cause them to be distant from us. Yaqub alayhi salam, despite all the pain, he remains steadfast in being approachable, accessible to his children and giving them good advice and always making the nisbat of that advice back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these were just a couple of the points that I wanted to touch on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq that we always remain a place of, of return for our children. Right? Like Ali radiallahu an would say that parenting is in three phases. The first seven years we play with them. The next seven years we discipline them and we teach them. And then after that, we remain their friends and advisors for the rest of their lives. If we do each stage correctly, then the outcome is that last stage when we're friends with our children. But if we don't build a friendship, a love, it's like Aisha radiallahu an would say about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when he was in the house, he was like a child. He was like one of us. He'd play with the children. He'd joke with us. That relationship allowed Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when he gave some advice, then they took it. When he said something of importance, they jumped. To, to, to put it into practice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq that in every aspect of our lives, as fathers, as mothers, as whatever role we play, that we always emulate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that we inculcate what he has taught us so that we fulfill the rights of all those who have rights over us. Allah give me and all of us the tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil